in the seemingly serene suburbia of Pinecrest Heights. There existed an HOA, Homeowners Association, that ruled with an iron fist. I, however, was not a member, blissfully ignorant of the bureaucratic behemoth lurking in the shadows. That was until they took a wrecking ball to my garage, triggering a chain of events that would redefine my understanding of nuclear revenge. It all began innocently enough. Nestled in my charming abode, I enjoyed the tranquility of not having to adhere to HOA guidelines, blissfully unaware of their autocratic tendencies. My garage, a testament to my laissez-faire attitude towards aesthetic conformity, stood proudly, housing an eclectic mix of tools, forgotten hobbies, and a collection of vintage arcade games. The trouble started when Mr. Eugene Kensington, the self-appointed enforcer of the HOA, decided that my garage was a blemish on the immaculate canvas of Pinecrest Heights, an affront to his carefully curated neighborhood utopia. He couldn't stand the sight of my slightly peeling paint and the quirky, hand-painted sign that read, Welcome to the Garage of Wonders. To him, it was an eyesore that needed swift eradication. One fateful morning, as I sipped my coffee and marveled at the unspoken beauty of my chaotic domain, the rumble of heavy machinery shattered the peace. I rushed outside to find a demolition crew, sponsored by the HOA, enthusiastically dismantling my beloved garage. Hold it right there. I yelled, aghast at the ruthless assault on my personal space. Mr. Kensington, clad in a perfectly pressed suit, sauntered over with an air of superiority. This garage is an aberration, an eyesore, and it's coming down for the greater good of Pinecrest Heights. You should have conformed to the guidelines. But I'm not even a member of the HOA. I have the right to live in nonconformist bliss. I protested. With a dismissive wave, he retorted, the rules apply to everyone in Pinecrest Heights, member or not. Consider this a favor, a free garage upgrade, compliments of the HOA. Fueled by rage and an overwhelming sense of injustice, I decided it was time to teach Mr. Kensington and his HOA cronies a lesson they'd never forget. But I wasn't about to stoop to their level. No, I would go for the nuclear option, a legal battle that would shake the very foundations of Pinecrest Heights. Engaging the services of the sharpest lawyer in town, Samantha, Sly, Anderson, I filed a lawsuit against the HOA for trespassing, destruction of property, and emotional distress. The courtroom transformed into a battleground, with Sly wielding her legal prowess like a seasoned warrior. The HOA, confident in their bureaucratic fortress, underestimated the fury they had unleashed. The judge, however, wasn't swayed by their polished arguments. Sly presented evidence of their overreach, their disdain for individuality, and the fact that they had targeted a non-member. The courtroom buzzed with tension as my case gained momentum. As the trial reached its climax, Sly delivered a closing statement that resonated like a war cry. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, we stand here not just for a garage but for the very essence of freedom and individuality that makes Pinecrest Heights diverse and unique. The HOA's attempt to homogenize this community is an affront to the principles upon which this nation was built. The judge, tapping his gavel with a sense of satisfaction, ruled in my favor. The HOA was ordered to pay hefty reparations for the demolition, and the court issued a scathing rebuke of their autocratic tendencies. It was a victory for the little guy, a triumph over conformity. However, I wasn't content with just a legal win. No, I had bigger plans for my nuclear revenge. Inspired by the very arcade games that once resided in my garage, I proposed a community wide event the Pinecrest Heights Retro Arcade Festival. The festival was a celebration of diversity, individuality, and the joy of nonconformity. With the help of fellow residents, we turned the once-destroyed garage site into a vibrant hub of retro arcade games, 
each one reflecting the unique personalities of its owner. The festival attracted attention far beyond Pinecrest Heights, earning support from neighboring communities and even making headlines in the local news. The HOA, realizing they had unwittingly fueled a rebellion, attempted damage control, but it was too late. The festival became an annual tradition, a testament to the resilience of a community that refused to be stifled by bureaucratic norms. As for Mr. Kensington, he faded into the background, a humbled figure in the face of a community that had discovered the strength in embracing its quirks. The nuclear revenge I sought turned out to be not the destruction of an enemy but the creation of something beautiful, a reminder that sometimes, it takes a little chaos to reveal the true colors of a community. And in Pinecrest Heights, those colors were more vibrant than ever before. In the idyllic town of Meadowvale, the Homeowners Association, HOA, ruled with an iron fist. I, however, was a proud non-member, content with my little plot of land on the outskirts. Little did I know that my peaceful haven would soon become the battleground for an epic showdown against the HOA's land-grabbing ambitions. It all began innocently enough. One sunny afternoon, I received a letter in the mail, adorned with the officious emblem of the Meadowvale HOA. Intrigued, I opened it to find a notice claiming that my property, a charming four acres of solitude, was in violation of a new zoning ordinance. According to the letter, the HOA had decided to annex a portion of my land for a community garden. Outraged, I scanned through the fine print, and to my disbelief, I discovered a convoluted clause buried within the legalese, granting the HOA the right to seize land for community development without the owner's consent. Incensed by this audacious attempt to infringe upon my property rights, I decided it was time to unleash the nuclear option, a legal battle that would expose the HOA's greed and safeguard my cherished plot. Enter Gloria Jefferson, a formidable attorney known for taking on the biggest legal goliaths in town. With a fiery spirit and a track record of championing the underdogs, Gloria eagerly took up my case. The courthouse would soon be the stage for a clash between an unassuming homeowner and the seemingly invincible HOA. As the legal proceedings unfolded, Gloria discovered a web of shady dealings within the HOA. It appeared that some influential members had plans to develop a luxury condominium complex on my land, masquerading it as a community garden in their deceptive notices. The revelation added fuel to the fire turning my personal battle into a crusade against corruption. The courtroom buzzed with tension as Gloria skillfully presented evidence of the HOA's ulterior motives. She exposed backdoor dealings, secret meetings, and a trail of emails outlining the grand conspiracy to snatch my land. The once-respected HOA was now under the harsh scrutiny of public opinion, and their pristine image crumbled like a poorly constructed house of cards. The judge, a stern figure with a no-nonsense demeanor, listened intently as Gloria painted a vivid picture of a community organization gone rogue. The courtroom was filled with murmurs of disbelief as the truth unfolded. The HOA's lawyer stuttered through feeble defenses, unable to salvage their tarnished reputation. In a dramatic turn of events, the judge ruled in my favor dismissing the HOA's claims and labeling their actions as a blatant abuse of power. The courtroom erupted in applause as Gloria and I shared a triumphant glance. Justice had prevailed, but I wasn't satisfied with just a legal victory. Emboldened by the court's decision, I decided to take my revenge to the next level, a public expose that would lay bare the HOA's misdeeds for all of Meadowvale to witness. Armed with evidence of their corrupt practices, Gloria and I collaborated with investigative journalists to bring the scandal to light. He local newspaper ran a front-page story titled, HOA Hijinks, Scandalous Secrets Revealed, detailing the sordid saga of the HOA's attempt to steal my land. The community, once blindly trusting of the association, now demanded accountability. 
Outraged residents rallied against the once mighty HOA, calling for resignations and transparency. The scandal didn't stop at newspaper headlines. The story went viral on social media, attracting attention beyond Meadowvale. The once untouchable HOA faced a barrage of criticism from homeowners across the nation, all united against the abuse of power. As the community garden plan crumbled, the HOA faced mounting pressure to reform. A special election was held, and a new board, committed to transparency and fairness, was elected. The rogue members responsible for the land grab were ousted, their reputations forever stained by their avaricious ambitions. Meanwhile, my plot of land, once under the threat of condominiums, became a symbol of resilience. Inspired by the victory, Meadowvale residents transformed it into a true community garden, fostering a sense of togetherness and shared responsibility. Flowers bloomed where corruption had once festered, and the once divided community found common ground. The nuclear revenge, in this case, wasn't a destructive force but a catalyst for positive change. The battle against the HOA had exposed the rot within, prompting a much needed reformation. The victory wasn't just mine, it belonged to the entire community that stood up against injustice. As the sun set on Meadowvale, it cast a warm glow over a neighborhood rebuilt on the principles of fairness, honesty, and the resilience of the human spirit. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more of our original stories then please like and subscribe, and share and leave comments.